Hello friends and welcome back to the Hall of Craft! I'm back with another video for you guys and today I'm going to be talking about trees but not just any trees I'm going to be talking about the most modular trees on YouTube. Now, there are many tutorials that already exist on YouTube about how to build trees ranging from the ultra-realistic, indestructible geek gaming trees to the, uh, what I would call, semi-modular uh, set from RP Archive to the kind of, like, indestructible DM Scotty's favorite trees. All great videos that I will link in the uh, description that you can go check out after you watch this one. Now, none of these trees quite scratch my itch because I've got a fever and the only cure is more cowbell. I mean magnets. More magnets. What I really wanted for my trees was them to be both very modular and very realistic. So here's what I ended up creating. Totally modular trees that are built in segments and can be taken apart for both storage or customization during play. But were they worth it? That's the question. I won't waste any more of your time. I'll just jump right into it. So a build like this requires a little bit of planning. So the first thing I did is I got out my notebook and I started sketching out some ideas and outlining the goals for what I really needed to accomplish with this build. When I first got into crafting, I made a set of DM Scotty's favorite trees. So I used them as a bit of a reference point for sizing here. His main goals for the trees was to make them easy to make and not to disrupt too much of the visibility on the table. So they're very light on branches. But my main issue with them is the scale. I think they're way too tall. So I know that I want to make mine shorter than the DM Scotty's favorite trees. I also want to have a lot more branches than his do. I figured this will help my trees look a little bit more realistic, and if the foliage becomes a sight blocking issue during play, I can just remove the branches and set them off to the side. So my solution here to create modularity is to have three segments for my trees. I'm going to call these toppers, middles, and bottoms. The bottoms will need to be sturdy bases for the trees. The middles should be flexible segments that work to add height to the trees. And then the toppers should be nice caps that end the trunk of the tree in a satisfying, natural looking way that isn't too abrupt. Here's where I decide how tall each of these segments is, and how many of each I planned on making. In hindsight, these are an absurd amount of trees. In classic Hall of Craft fashion, I bit off way more than I could chew and turn this project into just a huge endeavor, but more on that later. So to get started on this build, I decided that my best bet for a sturdy and lightweight core was to use aluminum sculpting wire. I cut a couple of segments of this thicker one I have to test the scale versus one of my minis. And once I was satisfied with that, I got dug into making my first prototype. For the base, I took some leftover cork bases which I had pre-made for my miniatures, and using a set of pliers, I broke the edges into rough, more natural shapes. I punched a hole into the hardened cork with my wire segment, and then I filled that hole with hot glue, pressing and holding the wire vertically inside. While it was still hot, I took this metal screw piece and secured that to both the base and the wire. I think this is a leftover piece from an IKEA furniture uh, hardware set, uh, but I can't remember exactly where I got it from. It was just in my bits box and I happened to have enough of them uh, to build all of the trees that I wanted to. The purpose of this piece is to add a little more heft to the base of the trees. I want to make sure that it has enough weight to support the rest of the tree structure later on when we add the other segments and the branches. Once those are in place, I sand the top of the wire flat, and using more hot glue, I press a 10 by 2 millimeter magnet into place on top. Once the glue has cooled down enough to hold it, I get to work with the hot glue gun, adding much more hot glue to the secure the magnet in place and create a nice structure for it to sit in. Once I'm happy with that, I will repeat those steps on the bottom and top of the middle segment, using my magic stick to ensure that all of my polarities are aligned and in the right direction. For the topper piece, I cut a 2 inch segment 
thin of wire, and then I glue a magnet only to the bottom of it. Once that's all dried, you're left with a base structure that looks like this. Now I repeat that process five more times while also creating a couple of extra middle segments. The goal here was to have some variety in the tree heights and, and the versatility to be able to add extra middle segments to create taller trees. While working on all of these segments, I found myself making a couple of observations. So the first observation is that the hot glue doesn't want to stick to either the magnets or the wire very well. It will stick for the short term, but given a lot of wear and tear, it will find itself peeling off. So what the strategy that I'm doing with the hot glue gun is basically trying to like wrap the wire and the magnets in hot glue so that the hot glue is is kind of creating a little cocoon around it and sticking to itself rather than trying to use it like you would normally use hot glue and, and attach two segments together. I also found that the hot glue is pretty light and while I was initially worried that adding too much hot glue would make them heavy and non-functional, it was actually okay and even helpful uh, for the structural integrity to be a little more liberal with the spin the hot glue around the connection points. I want these trees to have the ability to be placed on any terrain seamlessly, so I'm completely avoiding bases. The closest thing to a base is the cork, and even that will be mostly covered once we start adding the details later on. To accomplish this baseless goal, but also prevent the trees from toppling over easily, I'm going to be adding some big gnarly roots sprawling out from the tree's bases. I will do this by cutting short segments of the thick sculpting wire and bending them into organic shapes with two pairs of pliers. Then I just secure them in place with some hot glue. I'm also making sure to let gravity and the flat surface of my table help me out to keep these level and in place. After I have all the wires in place, I will come back with the hot glue gun and bulk out their connection point, adding a small amount of hot glue to the roots and then dragging it around with the nozzle to add some texture. This really worked out well and the bases are super solid. Okay, now it's time to start thinking about how I'm going to handle the branches. I know that I want these connections to be magnetic, so that requires me to have a magnet on the trunk as well as a magnet on the end of the branch. First thing I need to do is bulk up the area on the tree trunk to create an area for the magnet to sit. I want this to be at a slightly upward angle to give the branch a little more realism and sturdiness. To do this, I'm gonna cut a half inch strip of EVA foam because it's so flexible. Then I just take those strips and wrap them around the wire segments at the height of my branch nodes and glue them in place with some hot glue. Once the EVA foam is in place, I take a sharp knife and cut them at a 45 degree angle. This is going to create a nice little platform to hold the magnets on the trunks. This is where I start to realize just how much work I've signed myself up for by making six trees with four extra middle segments. I did a little math beforehand to make sure that I had enough magnets already to accomplish this project, but here are some of the numbers. Each base piece will have four branches. Each middle piece will have four branches, and each top piece will have four branches. That means there will be eventually 88 branches I have to make, and that in total is 176 magnets. There's a bit of TLC that has to go into each one of these branches, and that is where the bulk of the work of this project really surfaces. Once all my nodes are in place, it's time to add the magnets to the platforms. First, you take your magnet stick and place a magnet onto the correct side for polarity. Then you put a blob of hot glue on the node where the magnet needs to end up. Then you use the magic stick to press the magnet in place for a few seconds and twist the stick and slide it to the side to deposit the magnet. The magic stick works like a dream here because the hot glue doesn't really want to stick to it, especially when you twist it. This magic stick is an idea from Trenta at Miscast Terrain. I totally stole it from him uh, in his hobby tricks video. It is such a great idea. I recommend you check out his video uh, on how well, just all of his tricks because they're all amazing. Now you just repeat that until all of your branch nodes are covered in magnets. With the magnets in place, I could go through with my hot glue gun and just bulk out all of the connection points a little bit more to add some more sturdiness. It was at this point that I had a bit of a shower epiphany. I realized that even with the magnets at an angle, it probably wasn't going to be sturdy enough to hold the weight of the branches, especially once I start making them longer, adding extra branches coming off of them, and then eventually adding the foliage. I just thought the weight would probably be too much for these little magnets that I was using, so I needed to kind of give them a helping hand and help them kind of defy gravity a little bit. So instead of just risking it and then eventually being disappointed 
at the result, I decided to just tackle the problem now and give them some extra reinforcement while it was <laughs> still in my hands to do so. To do this, I used plastic straws. I'm cutting the plastic straws into roughly a quarter of an inch segments, and then I'm gluing them in place around the magnets to create a little chamber that will support the weight of the branches. These just so happen to be the perfect size to fit just around the magnets and have a little bit of extra room uh, for the branch to move around, but they're small enough that it, it's, it gives a really solid connection point. To actually glue them, I just pick them up from the outside with a pair of tweezers, and then I put a bead of hot glue around the outside only of the connection point, and then I press it over top of the magnet. Once they're in place, I just secure the area around them with some more hot glue. You may be sick of me saying the words hot glue or saying that the next step will be using more hot glue, but I'm just gonna tell you here, this project is like 87% hot glue. Now for the branches themselves. The branches are a lot like the roots in that they will start with a length of the thicker sculpting wire, except these will also have a magnet glued to the very end. For this connection point, the hot glue will just not cut it, so I'm gonna switch to super glue. I'm just gonna put a drop of super glue on the magnet and then a drop of accelerant on the end of the sculpting wire and then hold those together in place until the connection is secure. Once it's secure, you have a nice solid stem for your branch. Here was the footage of my first test for weight. The magnet in combination with the straw chamber is enough to hold my barbarian mini. Not too bad. We might actually be onto something here. Before I just charged ahead making all of my branches willy-nilly, I wanted to get the scaling just right. So I started making a couple of prototype branches. I knew that if all my branches were the same length, then my trees would inevitably look very boxy and unrealistic. So I wanted to add some variety and have them be longer at the bottom, medium in the middle, and then shorter at the very top to create a nice natural tree shape. The physical construction of the branches is super simple, and it would be the same for all of the branches. It would just be the sizing and scaling of each branch that would change from segment to segment. To make the branch, I took the two inch stem made of thicker sculpting wire and paired it up with five smaller branches made out of taking 1.5 inch strips of thin sculpting wire and twisting two lengths together. And then I glued them together in a semi-random way resembling a tree branch. Once it was all together, I coated all of the branches top and bottom with, you guessed it, hot glue. Hot glue, 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 hot glue. It's not sounding like words anymore. <laughs> this both gives it strength and a really nice texture. Now here's where I was starting to realize the amount of work that I had signed myself up for. However, I do have some time-saving tips if you are following along. The first one is instead of twisting your wire by hand, use a drill. The middle branch segment, I use the exact same method, just smaller segments. The stem is one inch, but the branches are still 1.5 inches. This creates a shorter branch overall, but the 1.5 inch branches still give the tree a nice full look with the foliage. For the topper branches, I use a much shorter stem segment at only half an inch, and then some slightly shorter branches at one inch apiece. And I glued three of those branches in place instead of five. This helps round out the top of the tree, and it also helps to hide the trunk. Now that I've figured out all of the sizing for my branches, it is time to just bang these out assembly line style. All 85 of them. <laughs> this is by far the most tedious segment of the whole craft. If I had only been making three or four instead of six trees, this probably would have gone by a lot faster and felt a little bit more reasonable, but I wasn't. I was making six trees with extra segments on top, so I just felt like I was in branch purgatory. I was working on this for days and days and I lost all sight of reality. All I knew was branches and magnets and hot glue. Cutting the wire segments, sanding the wire segments, twisting the wire segments, thankfully not too bad because I have a drill, cutting the wire segments, gluing the wire segments, and attaching the magnets over and over and over 85 times. Once you have gotten through 
cutting the wire segments, attaching the magnets, and sanding the wire segments. The bulk of time on this step is by far coating all of the branches in hot glue. Hot glue! And then waiting for that hot glue to dry. One tip that I came up with to try and combat the wait time of waiting for your hot glue to cool down on the branches was to have a glass of water handy. And then as soon as you are finished coating the branch in hot glue, you just dunk it in the water and it sets instantly and then you can just set it aside on like a piece of parchment paper to just kind of air dry while you move on to the next branch. Huge time saver. One thing I started doing here as well, which actually started adding a lot of sturdiness to these branches, but I would add more hot glue near the base of the branch, not quite where the magnet is, but kind of in that area, guesstimating kind of where the straw would push out to, and then taking the branch while the hot glue is still kind of uh, malleable and pushing it into the socket, kind of creating a nice little uh, connection point for the straw and the hot glue and then taking that out and before it you know gets too stuck and, and curing it off. This just gives the magnets a little bit of extra help and the hot glue kind of functions as some natural friction to keep the branches from kind of moving around too much once you have them in their sockets. The only downside here is that it kind of reduces the modularity of the piece a little bit and this is mostly because of sloppiness on my end. I think that you could approach this a little bit more thoroughly and a little more strictly uh, to keep it modular. In my case I got a little sloppy with the length of the straw segments so some branches have kind of longer between magnet to hot glue than others so it, what happens here is that some sockets fit branches better than others. If you're a little more strict with your measurements here I think you would totally uh, correct for this error. Okay so once I had finally exited branch purgatory it was always my intention to add extra texture to these branches and to the trees itself with the DM Scotty Classic, the toilet paper and watered down white glue method. So I got all of the ingredients to do that, ready to go and set up on my table. And it was pretty clear, pretty quickly, that it was not going to be a fun process. The paper just did not want to cling to the hot glue at all. And in order to make it stick, I was having to make the tree a lot bulkier than I wanted the end result to be. I coated one full tree just out of sheer stubbornness, knowing that it wasn't the look I had wanted, but I had gotten all the ingredients out and ready to go, and I wanted to at least give it a college try. So I moved on to the branches, and that's when I quickly decided that this was just not going to work. This would have been an absolute nightmare, applying this method to all 88 of my branches. So I ripped all of that mushy paper off of my tree, and then threw that paper in the garbage. I stewed for a few days on what would be my new solution because I did not have a plan B. I was so sure that that was going to work and when it didn't I, I really kind of just pumped the brakes on the project. Didn't know where to go from here. And then I realized that the answer had been staring me in the face the whole time. Hot glue. <laughs> Using my newfound water dunk cooling method, I got to work bulking out and texturizing all of my tree segments with more hot glue. Using the nozzle to draw deep grooves and natural knots and twists into the trunks of my trees. I also used hot glue to build up a little ridge at the top of each of the bases and middle segments. This is to function like the straws did for the branches and add a little bit more structure and friction to the connection points. It was during this process that I found the absolute height limit on these trees and no amount of adding extra hot glue to the connection points was going to change that. One bottom, two middles, and a topper is the limit for these trees. I had intended event originally that like three would be kind of cool and create this like really nice tall tree, but it is just the, it'll collapse under the weight of itself or the smallest kind of nudge will knock it over. And I played a little bit with trying to kind of accomplish that by adding like extra hot glue and really bulking out the connections for that one specific tree. But I ultimately decided against it because the whole point of these trees is that they're supposed to be modular, almost like tree Lego. And if I have 
these specialized pieces that only work for when you're trying to create a super tall tree, it kind of defeats the whole purpose. So I don't need it to be that tall anyway. It was just kind of limit testing, I guess. Instead of bulking out the branches with even more hot glue, I decided to actually bust out some modeling paste here and then just paint this onto all of my branches to create a really nice bark texture. This also functions pretty well to hide any remaining gaps in the hot glue or any areas where the kind of twisted wire peeks through to the surface. After coating all of the branches with the modeling paste, I loved the result so much that I decided to also use that on all of the trunk segments. Once all my pieces are coated and the modeling paste has dried, it is time to start priming my trees. I'm going to start by using a brush on primer to coat all of the areas around the plastic straws. After that is dry, I can bust out the black magic base coat to coat everything else individually. I did it in this order because the black magic base coat is really good at holding everything together, but it doesn't stick very well to plastic. So the primer sticks to the plastic and then the black magic base coat kind of fills in all the gaps. Once that's all dried and touched up, it's time to paint. To keep this nice and easy, I'm going to be painting these trees entirely with big makeup brushes. And the technique I'm using is gonna be a super easy over brushing and then transitioning into dry brushing. For a starting base coat, I'm using a nice burnt umber. This looks like almost nothing on camera, but it's like a nice dark brown. After the burnt umber, I move on to a wine red. It's a nice dark burgundy type color, and it will add some good contrast to the undertones that will eventually be contrasted with yellow toned highlights. For the next step, I'm using cinnamon brown. This is where I start to warm things up a bit. Again, I'm just overbrushing from an upward angle, letting the recesses stay darker and emulating that these would be lit from above from a natural light source. Once it's coated, it looks like this. Not a bad base of colors, but let's start to add some more highlights. I'm gonna mix some golden brown into my cinnamon brown, roughly 50-50, and then I'm gonna start dry brushing instead of over brushing. Almost the same technique, just with less paint on the brush. I'm also gonna stop highlighting the underside of the branches from here on out. This does a couple of helpful things. The first is that it helps you at a quick glance kind of identify what is up and what is down on any particular branch when you're assembling the trees. And then the second is it just gives you a more natural look because the underside of the branch would be receiving less light than the, uh, the top of it. Now in classic Hall of Craft fashion, I'm going to take my highlights probably like three steps higher than they need to be for a nice realistic look, but it's okay because I'm going to wash it back down immediately after. So now I'm just adding some highlights with straight out of the bottle golden brown and then eventually I'm using golden brown mixed with ivory. This really calls out the texture that we made in the bark with the glue gun nozzle uh, but it doesn't quite look and have that nice realistic look that you would find in nature. So it's time to bring that back down. So lately I've been a huge fan of oil washes and I was super tempted to use them on this build as well. However, in my last video, I found that the hot glue in that build and the oil wash had kind of an adversarial reaction to each other. And that the, the oil wash kind of broke down the connection between the hot glue and, and what it was attached to. And for this build, seeing as it is 87% hot glue, it's probably not a risk that's worth taking. So I've defaulted back to the old classic of ink washes. I grab an old bottle of leftover black brown wash and I start adding to it. There isn't really a method to this madness. I just add a bunch of black, brown, and green inks to the existing wash and then I add a good amount of flow aid, matte medium, and water. Then I shake it up and test it on some of the roots. I'm not sure if it shows on camera, but in person when applying this wash, it looked really dark and really green. So I just added the wash to one tree to start because I just wanted to make sure that it was a good look that I was satisfied with before applying it to all of them. So I took one tree, left it assembled, and basically just drenched it in the wash. Gravity will help you out here if you keep it assembled and the wash will kind of pool in the natural areas and kind of pool off of the highlighted areas. After it was completely drenched in the wash, I took a makeup sponge and just kind of wiped away the wash from any areas where it was cooling unnecessarily or some of the highlight areas just to kind of make sure that I maintain some contrast and then I left it overnight to dry and it turns out I had absolutely nothing to worry about as it usually does the wash dried much lighter than it looked wet 
and the green tones mostly settled in the shadow areas. It did a really good job to add some life back into these trees. Speaking of adding life to these trees, it's time for the most rewarding, most satisfying step of the build, adding the foliage. One thing that DM Scotty really nailed with his favorite trees was adding plastic leaves that you can get from the dollar store instead of moss or flock. I think that while moss and flock can both be done amazingly well to give you a really nice realistic result, I think it's inevitable that they will flake and fall off of your trees just through wear and tear over time and I really wanted to avoid that. So I'm gonna stick with the plastic foliage, but you could definitely use moss if you're into that look for this build. So for this build, I'm gonna be chopping up a couple different types of plastic foliage just to give myself some variety on the trees and also create maybe a couple different types of trees. Once I have the flock selected, and chopped up, I just start adding it to the branches with some more hot glue. The amount of foliage that you add here is totally up to you, but for this, I wanna add just enough that it looks like a nice healthy tree, but not too much that it's so obscured and so thick that it blocks all vision on the table. I ended up adding a small segment to the end of each branch node, and then one or two bigger plastic pieces to the central areas of each branch to help fill things out. For the toppers, I glued three big leaf segments to the core of it facing upwards. This helps fill out the tree and also hide the topper segment itself. Here's what a standard tree looks like once all of the foliage is added. It's all coming together now. I grabbed a rogue mini here to test the ability to place minis inside of the trees and I was quite pleased. I know that the branches had the strength to hold minis, but once the foliage was added, it had the unintended side effect of being a really good stabilizer so that the minis don't slip and slide around. To add some diversity, I used this other kind of foliage that I found at Michael's for a couple of my trees. These ones have much more of like a fir tree kind of vibe. And I think it just goes to illustrate that changing up the flock can give you a very, very different uh, vibe of your tree pretty quickly and easily. Once your flock is attached, the build is complete. Congratulations.
So now for the golden question. Were they worth it? To me, it's a yes, but with an asterisk. Mostly because they took quite a long time to make. And my crafting time has kind of come at a premium price in the last six months or so. I only get a few hours a week, realistically, to contribute to a craft. And each step of this project, because I was making so many trees, took quite a long time. So I found myself getting a bit of burnout working on them, not getting that kind of dopamine payoff of, of finishing a step and moving on to the next one, because I'd be spending multiple weekends working on the same step just to kind of keep them all moving at the same time and get them finished and, and looking good together. I would estimate the time at each tree to be at least nine hours. All the individual magnets and branches really, really bulked up that time. So for some people, I would understand that that's a complete deal breaker outright. For those people, I would recommend the DM Scotty's trees. They're super quick, super easy, and super durable. Another drawback of these trees is that they're a little fragile. And by that, I don't mean that the parts are going to break. The parts are very sturdy on the tree. I mean that the connection points are a little fragile. So if you have players that are a little rambunctious at your table, or maybe have bad depth perception, or constantly kind of bumping into things, you're probably gonna have branches getting knocked off, or segments kind of falling over. But as you can see, like, you know, under a regular amount of kind of movement, they're pretty good. So it's probably not the best piece of terrain if you're DMing for children a lot. But now for the positives. Like any modular terrain, a major strength here is the versatility of options. Characters climbing trees? No problem. Rolling a nat 1, the branch breaks and falls on the ground? No problem. Dragon lands on the board destroying all foliage? Easy. Need some random thicket to block a pathway? Modular trees got you covered. And for me personally, I find myself on this kind of binge of moving away from quick and dirty terrain just to get it on the table, uh, to moving for more pieces that are going to last me a long time and be things that I can look back on years from now and be proud of. Like it's a valuable set of my collection and less something that I just kind of whipped together for the sake of a session that was coming up. So with all of that considered, I think that these modular trees are a great result for me and my table. And I hope that even if you don't agree and it's not a good result for you, that you've been at least able to get some piece of inspiration or nugget out of this video that you can use at your own table. And that's all there is to this video, friends. I'd like to take a quick second and thank you all so much for watching and supporting my channel. I hope you guys have a fantastic week and I will see you very soon in the next video. Take care. Now for the golden question. <laughs> Dropping branches. Uh...